Hi guys, so today's video is going to be my monthly favorites. This is December, which just ended yesterday, so I'm not that late. Um, these are my absolute favorite videos to watch of other YouTubers. I love to see A, what I should spend my money on, or B, what I should save my money on. All great things, and it's nice to see other people who are buying makeup in the volumes that I am and trying makeup, so I feel like we have, like, we're a little pickier because we, um, we try a lot of stuff. So anyways... I have a lot of products, which is weird for me because typically at the month's end, I'm like gathering things um, to try and have a video's worth of products. But this video, I had to take things out because I was like, I can't, it just can't be that long. There's more months in the in the year. It just can't be this long. But these are all of the A-listers from this month. Um, I was wearing makeup every single day. I did not have any makeup free days, I don't think. Actually, I had one. I had a migraine, so I didn't wear makeup that day. But... <sighs> this is what happens like I start talking and then as I'm <laughs> many sentences at the same time like try to come out um but yeah so I feel like I really have a firm grasp on the good things from this month the standouters anyways I'm gonna try to stop the rambling see I'm like an all-or-nothing person like I either stare at you awkwardly and don't know what to say or <laughs> like <laughs> Alright, so just to warn you guys, there's a lot of hair products. I think I'm going to like put those in the end. I personally hate when people put hair products and like clothes and shit in their, in their makeup favorite videos. Um, hopefully you guys don't, but typically I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. I'm not like, not a hair guru. Like, this is a wig, girl. <sighs> Max is so cute right now. And I slept in that bed. Well, I edited in that bed for hours yesterday, so it's like really messed up but Max is so cute. <laughs> hey cutie. Alright so I think the angle might have changed but I had some technical difficulties in which I just turn it on and off and it fixes it. Um, I'm gonna start out with makeup. Um, I feel like that's what you guys really want to see. So I'm gonna start off on a positive note about an eyeshadow palette that I'm obsessed with. Sorry if I'm really nailsy. I'm like still really into it. Um, but this is from Gorgeous Cosmetics. This is an Australian brand and let me just tell you I'm moving to Australia for the pigments. If this is what, the, if this is what comes out of Australia, I'm goodbye America. Um, so this forest green color is what I'm pretty sure motivated these nails. Um, but then there's that minty color. These are so, so pigmented. It literally is sickening. Look at that. But if you guys aren't super into the green colors, they did have a lot of really pretty other color scheme palettes. They have ones that are like geared toward your eye colors. Um, I really want to pick up the purple one that they have geared towards green eyes. I don't know why green eyes picked a green palette, but don't regret it. Love these colors. Oh, sorry for blinding you. Even if you don't like the colors, the formula on these is incredible. These are, these all three are shimmery. Um, and then obviously this black is matte. It is still super pigmented and blacks are not super known for their pigment in palettes like this. Um, but it's really, really nice. Everything was pigmented and the shimmers were like really soft, like really, really effortless to blend. Um, I really liked that. I really liked this for that. Sorry, I had to drop it to get them out. Um, but I assure you, no eyeshadows were broken. But these are magnetic and they pop out. Let me go actually get... Oh, shoot. I just nailed it. Let me actually go pick up one of my individual eyeshadow paint palettes to compare. I always forget that I have these, but I'm just going to pull... Actually, this, this color is not even used. So this is a... Alright, so this is a Makeup Geek shadow. This is Berries and Cream. And then this is the Gorgeous Cosmetics Pan. Can you see? This is like the sun and this is us over on Earth. Like, holy schmoly. To be completely honest, do would, would I ever use this? Would even a makeup artist ever use a pan this big? No. But what you can appreciate is the value. The bang for your buck. The fact that they give you a pan bigger than your eyeballs. I love it. Alright, so an eyeshadow palette that I didn't like so much is this e.l.f. Mad for Matte eyeshadow palette in Jewel Pop. I already did a video on this and I feel bad dragging it again, but um, I have some more things to say about this palette because I got some interesting comments about it. First of all, there's a way to share your opinion. Like, a, a, There's a way to disagree with someone 
and still be right, you know, um, a suggestion maybe, but it's all in how you word it. Um, I deleted a bunch of comments off that video, which I don't typically do, just because I wasn't feeling it, I wasn't here for it, I wasn't, I didn't care to even respond. Um, I have no respect for people who like disagree with me. Like I can be disagreed with, but I have no respect for someone who will come to my channel that I created with my money, my time, my thoughts, um, and disrespect my opinion on my video. You know what I mean? Like we can disagree and it can still be cool. But if you're not out there doing the same grind, then I just, I mean, <laughs> tell your friend, listen, I don't agree with this bitch. She's wrong. But don't comment it like I don't even care like I don't even I'm not even gonna respond to you you're gonna get deleted and no one's gonna see your shitty little opinion that being said I also got a lot of really sweet comments as usual sorry that the negative comments get more attention um but yeah so people are really passionate about this palette apparently I saw swatches on trend mood um, that she had reposted someone's swatches, and let me just tell you that those were so heavily swatched. I mean, layers of swatches. Um, and it's, but it's not, honestly, these don't swatch badly. They perform badly. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think, but even in that repost, they look chalky. They're just chalky. I mean, they're, they're a dollar a piece. Um. But yeah, it doesn't matter to me how inexpensive this palette is, it's just not worth it. Um, I don't like wasting $10, if you do. Um, I don't know what to tell you, I put $10 towards a much better palette, this is just not it. Um, but what I wanted to say about the comments that I received on this, I got um, some not negative, some not nasty comments of people suggesting, like I said, the right way. Um, saying that they had used a white base eye primer to put this down, um, which... Not that I disagree with, but let me just say in my defense, in, um, in people who don't like this palette's defense, I don't use eye primers. I don't have oily eyelids, so I don't use eye primers. I actually use eye primers on my oily areas, like my nose and my chin. Um, I typically will just clean up under my brows and whatever concealer I use to do that, put that down on my eyelids because the only reason I... Um, we use an eye primer is to get a sticky base, which I tried that with these and they showed up like half the color that they show up in the pan. So I would put the concealer down and then go straight in with say this purple and it would only grab like the blue pigments of this purple and that's all you could see and it didn't matter how much I built it up, it was just like becoming a blue, not this purple. Um, now when I did set my eyes and then went in with this shadow right here, it disappeared. I mean, it was gone within like two hours. <laughs> so I tried. And the, th the funny thing is, is I literally used this palette four times before I posted a, my opinion on it. I'm going to stop because I think I'm taking this palette way too seriously. Listen, I'm never going to use this palette. I just don't want it. It's not a good palette. It's, it's a dislike. All right. So this Zodiac palette. I did a review on this last month, I believe it was last month, I think it was like mid-November maybe, um, and I've been using it a lot, and I've used it a lot before I even posted the review, I'd used many of the different uh, combos in here to attempt to get a good look, I think, I said it in the video, I think I was just psyching that video out too much, um, but I've used this palette a lot, and I've come to finalize my thoughts on it, and yes, you're correct if you think that I should have finalized my thoughts before I posted the review, because I did sway some people, and that's you know, um, you live, you learn. Final thoughts on this palette. I still think that what I said about this palette being really, really dusty and that making it difficult to use, um, I still stick by that. But now that I know that about this palette, I use this palette in a different way. So I use this palette today. Um, I actually have a review. You'll see this look again, um, but I switched the eye look up a little bit and I also didn't really film the eye look. I, I kind of walked you through how I did it, but I didn't film the eye look because I thought um, it was too similar to something I'd done previously, but it's literally just like a simple cut crease. Um, and then I just went in with some darker eyeshadow and just put it everywhere. But anyways, um, when I used this today, I used it before I did my face makeup. Um, that way all the fallout chills and there's a lot of fallout from this guy. One of my problems with this palette was when I was trying to like 
define my eye with a darker color. It was just blending too much. I know, I don't know if that's a, like a thing that sh like should be complained about, but it was blending too much. It was getting muddy. Um, so what I did now was the darker purple that I went in here. I really didn't blend it that much. I kind of patted it on. Um, I didn't blend it too much because it will blend away. Um, and then these shimmers, these metallics remain incredible. Um, they are really, really, really soft. They're baked, so they're really, really, really soft. Um, I use them with my finger and they work incredibly. But yeah, so I don't think this is a bad palette. I've used it many times this month, many, many times this month. Um, and I use it today and it looks gorgeous and I love it. Um, yeah, but I think that loving this palette is learning how to work with it. Um, yeah, so I retract my negatively swayed review on this. I feel bad. Um, I still stick by my opinions on that, um, but like I said, liking this palette is learning how to work with its faults, is what I want to say. But I do love this palette. Alright, so this is the Light Stealing 24K Skin Frost Pro Palette. Um, I bought originally the Platinum Ice one, and I like that palette. But this one is so much better to me, um, and I'll explain why. Um, this is not Pale People Approved, but I still found a way to make it work, and you can still work with it. And I like these colors a lot better. Um, in my mind, I'm like a real sun-kissed look, <laughs> but on my face I'm super pale. Um, Sarcophagus is so, so pretty. First of all, I think... So what I do with Sarcophagus, um, I wear it by itself a lot, but King Tut is way too dark for me, so I'll put King Tut like, towards the back um, and then put Sarcophagus towards the front. But what I wanted to do in today's video, because several people asked for this and I keep forgetting to do it. They asked for it in my Instagram stories and I'm just a piece of crap so I keep forgetting. But I'm going to compare Sar Sarcophagus to Siberian Gold. I also am not too pale for Siberian Gold. I can make it work as well. First of all, they're both really buttery. Alright, so here is Sarcophagus and here is Siberian Gold. Siberian Gold is a little bit more bronzy and Sarcophagus has more champagne in it. Alright, so I hope that that helped those of you who had asked and waited so patiently. Alright, so these four right here are limited to this palette. So I'm going to talk about them more. Legendary is a really pretty blush. Giza is a really pretty eyeshadow. Um, you can also use this one as like a blush and it, I mean, of course, a shimmery metallic -y blush, um, but it's all in how you apply it. Um, but Liberace I've used as an eyeliner and as an eyeshadow, and I also really love it as a highlighter, even though it's not suited for me and you're going to be able to see it from a mile away. But I love it. It's like a green-based gold, and I just live it. I did not expect to like this palette so much when I got it. Um, I mainly just wanted it because I don't like to miss out on anything. And I wanted to put it on pale skin and see if we could make it work. My camera is going to die. Oh, you're fucking shitting me. My entire RCMA no color powder. 10 ounce star just fell. That's all I have left now. I'm gonna savor it. God, why do I put the lids on things? No, I have to vacuum. Another face palette um, and another product from Gorgeous Cosmetics. I picked up their highlight and blush palette. I tried to make it clear without like seeming like a butt kisser how much I love this palette. But holy guacamole, this palette is everything. Um, these shimmery shades, these two shimmery highlighty shades are not going to highlight you in the same way that like a Jeffree Star highlight would blind you. Um, these are very like more natural, more toned down, like more glow with from within highlighters. Um, again, an Australian company, I just don't think that they think it's all that necessary to... <laughs> um, but the real stunners in here are these blushes. These are my favorite blush, like Tarte Who. Um, these are incredibly freaking beautiful. This matches my uh, peach wig. This one right here matches my peach wig perfectly. These are all incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Alright, let's talk lips. Let's talk lips. So, as you guys know, December was a month of holidays um, and 
Holidays for me, just scream red lipsticks. I have three Jeffree Stars. I know it's a little aggressive, but I also have a Kat Von D, which is like breaking the rules or something, I think. Um, so first is this Kat Von D Project, <laughs> Project Chimps from Kat Von D. I love this. I know it's super limited edition and I don't think you can get it anymore, but it's really such a gorgeous color. And I really like her formula as well. It's very different from Jeffree Star's. Um, and it smells like rotten milk over time, but this is probably over a year old and I'm still using the shit out of it. Um, but it's such a gorgeous color, especially if you have pale skin. This is just pops. Um, I, when I wear this one with my blonde hair, whoo, 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 whoo. Um, I'm going to show you guys wifey. I did wear this one as well. Um, but I think it's kind of similar to Project Chimps, honestly. Pretty similar, huh? Um, and then Designer Blood, this is, again, a year old. Um, this is from his holiday collection last year. It is darker and it has a really pretty gold sheen to it. Um, again, this is really, 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 really freaking dramatic on pale skin, but I, I love it for that. Um, I'm all about the drama. And then there is the classic red. I think this is a classic red. It's pretty orange-based, but um, classic red to me, this is Checkmate. These guys, these four, I wore them a lot in December. <sighs> Alright, a lipstick that I did not like that I tried in December, and I think I'm really late to the hate on this one. I, I don't think I've ever watched anyone talk nicely about a melted liquid lipstick in their um, videos. Um, I guess the confusing part is this isn't a liquid lipstick, it's a liquefied lipstick, which... I mean, I guess the idea of a liquefied lipstick is that it's easier to apply, but then they put it in this like crazy sponge tip thing. And that's not easy to apply. Like, if you want to liquefy a lipstick and then put it in a liquid lipstick, like with an applicator, with a like, but this is not easy. <laughs> um, but this color also just like gags me. Um, it's called Melted Frosty and it looks like bubble gum. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely an atrocious color. It doesn't help that as I'm wearing this like bubblegum looking color, that this is like melting off of my lips. Um, it's just too, 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 too liquidy. Literally impossible to control. Um, it's also not super opaque. So you have to like apply a lot. And then like with the sponge applicator, like the more you're applying, the more it's like taking it away. It's just horrible. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. I, it was on clearance, but it still wasn't worth the money that I paid for it. Um, sorry, but I do not like it. I don't remember where I was because my camera died. Um, it's probably gonna die again. Um, all right. So this little ribbon case I got from mm, the same place I buy my Coco Lady Moss. Ladymoss.com is where I get my Coco lashes. Um, but I thought it was super gimmicky when I initially saw it. But I literally have like six pair of lashes right here, right now. Um, so obviously I'm not using this as much as I should. Um, but this helps me so much for sanitary reasons. Um, Alex has literally texted me pictures of my lashes everywhere in this house. Like when I'm ready for them to come off, it doesn't matter where I'm at. Um, he's so cute one time. They somehow ended up in my coffee cup. I have no idea. And he was like washing dishes and he poured out the coffee and a pair of lashes fell out. This is the cute part. He cleaned them off and saved them. And I was like, I'm not gonna use these, but like, I appreciate you. Uh, anyways, yeah, so for sanitary reasons, instead of throwing these wherever I feel, I've actually had them in my car before, like saved on my little gear shifter. Um, but for sanitary reasons, I do suggest this if you are disgusting with your lashes like me. <laughs> um, this does help. The only downside to this is if you are filming and you pull out a pair of lashes from here and you wanna like suggest them or let your audience know what they are in case they like them as well no idea so once these lashes and these other two pair of lashes that are out here are done I'm gonna start using these for my Stella's because I wear this every single video anymore I stopped buying any other lashes because they're just the best um, I don't know if I put these in here before but here's a fresh pair of Stella's these are from Coco lashes I get 10,000 million questions about my lashes they're typically always these um, yeah these are my absolute favorite lashes. I think they're like $7.99 um, and I get probably a week's worth of wear out of them. So like seven makeup days. Um, I know a lot of people don't wear makeup every single day. So like seven days of makeup out of these. Um, you do have to treat them right. And I've cleaned them before and then it work as well afterwards. Like the corners, I don't know. But 
Alright, so I was talking to Just Jasmine24 and Beyond Butte and their Instagram live video about Morphe brushes versus BH Cosmetics brushes. And we all came to kind of an agreement um, that BH Cosmetics brushes are kind of it. Now I picked some brushes from their studio line today and I have a lot, a lot of BH Cosmetics brushes. But I think their studio line is most comparable to the Morphe brushes. Um, and when I compare them to the Morphe brushes, I'm comparing them to the Elite brand. Um, this, as you can see, this ferrule is really loose. I have like a graveyard of Morphe brushes and you know I'm not like jumping on the bandwagon of Morphe, Morphe hate because I think that these are decent brushes. Um, what I won't do is buy any more of the, like their, their, their like limited collection releases of brushes anymore. Like their copper set was crap and like I think they have like a rose gold set and um, I will no longer be buying any of those. Not to say that I will never buy another Morphe brush because I do have some Morphe brushes that I really enjoy to come to follow. Um, but yeah, so this is their Morphe E3, which has been my favorite blush brush to date. And then this is the BH Cosmetics number two brush. Um, they're very, very similar in shape. I do think that the BH Cosmetics one is a little bit bigger, um, but these are beautifully made, um, not loose at all. I have a bunch of these and they're not loose at all. This is one of my favorites. Um, contour brushes. This is their number three. I have a bunch of eyeshadow brushes that I like from them. This is their, this is the Morphe E23. And the comparable one, sorry, should have had this together. And then this is the BH Cosmetics number five brush. Again, they are just both big blending brushes that have similar domed tops. But the quality on the BH Cosmetics one is just as good, if not better. I've not had one single BH Cosmetics brush break, and they've been both used to death and washed. Um, I, like I said, I have a graveyard, a little graveyard of Morphe brushes that I feel like super glue back together. <sighs> Alright, so the gunmetal set. I have some brushes that I really, really, really recommend from there. Um, I think the gunmetal set is a little bit more exploratory in their like shapes and stuff. <laughs> um, um, this is the Morphe, this is the G2. So I got this from Patrick Starr a long, long time ago. He uses this to buff out his concealer. Um, now this is the only brush that I will use to buff out my concealers. I do not like to use brushes to buff out my concealers, but this one literally does a really good job. He calls it a sponge on a stick and it does a really good job. Um, I love it for that, but I also really, really like this and that's what I typically use it more for. Um, it's got a lot of powder in it as you just saw, um, but I use it for setting my under eyes. Um, I like to use this one if I'm using a tinted, like a, a, a pressed powder. I like to use this for anything tinted because I just feel like it, what, how do I say? I feel like it packs on the color more. All right, in the same spectrum though, this is the G35. I like to use this one for just setting loose powders. Um, I think you guys have seen me use this a lot. For some reason lately, using a sponge to set my under eyes, it's not been working. It's gotten really, really cakey. Um, I think my under eyes are just super dry now that it's winter. So I cannot use that anymore, but I do use this brush a lot to set them. <laughs> This is the Morphe, I keep saying Morphe. This is the G22. I love this for pretty much everything. Um, this is really good for applying foundation. I don't like brushes for applying foundation. <laughs> I'm just so picky about like when I like something, I like it. When I don't like it, I don't like it. Um, but it's really, really good for that. Um, but I, what I really like using this for is applying bronzer. And I don't use this for like a super dark bronzer, but I use this if I'm just like lightly bronzing, which it's almost never. But um, yeah, this is a really good brush that just really diffuses everything really well. You could also use this for blush. I've seen people use these for primer. This is probably like uh, the perfect travel brush because you can use it for like everything. This is something kind of weird, but this was sent to me last month and um, I, I had asked for a diffuser for Christmas and I didn't get one, but that's okay. Um, I've ordered one um, for myself, but these are the doTERRA oils. I don't have it yet, so I haven't actually diffused these, but they sent me two different oils. This, this is wild orange and this is just the, the small mini jar. Can I just tell you? I love, love, love citrus scents, um, and I think that this one is really cool. I think the two that the two scents that they sent me really made sense when I looked it up. Um, I feel like I'm super late to the game on like the oil trend, but 
Wild Orange is for detoxifying, I read. Um, and I've been sick like this entire month, um, so I don't know if they knew that. But it also is energizing, which I'm an energy junkie. Like, this is gone, and this is my third coffee. Um, so I don't know if they knew that, but they hit it right on the, like, <laughs> if I feel like I'm going to... If I, if I feel like my heart is going to explode, if I have another energy drink, I'm gonna sniff my little wild orange. I love, love, love citruses. Um, and then they also sent me the lavender roll-on, which is calming. So if I, again, if I feel like my heart is gonna explode, I'll just chill out, calm down. But I think it's really smart that they sent me both an energizing and a calming oil. Like, is that not, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, but I've been reading way too much about oils and like all the benefits and I'm not a person who has like anxiety or anything that's like out of the norm. Um, but I have read a lot about people saying that this helps their anxiety, like diffusing oils and stuff. You don't need a diffuser for this roll on, but I will need to diffuse this wild orange. But I did order a little pack of my own oils <laughs> to diffuse. I think I'm going to keep it in my bathtub. Is that weird? Like in my, by my bathtub? I take bath almost daily since I broke my ankle um, versus showers um, and I think it just sounds really nice and like really relaxing to have like candles in my bath and like my oils diffusing like I don't know I don't know I don't know if you guys are in that picture with me but all right so now's the time to clock out if you guys are not interested in hair products um, if you do not clock out and you stay here for the hair products please disclaimer I really don't know what I'm talking about. Um, everything that I think I know about hair products is like secondhand knowledge. I've either read it off of the internet, which is suspicious as <laughs> um, as can be, or Alex's mom is actually a hairdresser. She's helping me repair my damage so much I would literally be bald without her. My battery won't stop dying. Recap. This is a wig. I wear wigs. Um, number one, because they're gorgeous and help my makeup looks look really cool. Um, but number two, because I recently tried to bleach my hair. I've been off work for eight weeks and I have another six weeks to go. No. Eight, four weeks. Four more weeks to go. And I had all that time to like slowly bleach my hair and I decided to do it in two days. I damaged my hair. It looks crazy. It's, it's broken off. It's just really, really like a shitty texture now. So I'm, I've been wearing wigs like crazy. Um, I love them. <laughs> At the same time as all of that happened, they reached out some, uh, Everyday Wigs reached out to me and wanted to send me a wig and I picked a blonde one, which was what I was going for. And ever since then, been addicted. Um, I am now 10, week, 10 wigs deep and I have three more on the way. But my absolute favorite wig that I've tried so far is this one. I think you guys know which one this is gonna be. Um, this is from Eva Hair. Uh, I think that's worth mentioning because I think this color is out there a lot, but I don't think it's done as well as Eva Hair did it. So this is their candy pink um, wig. I will link it below, of course. Um, but this baby is so gorgeous. So obviously I am love. I'm in love with the color. It's got these like pastel pinks in here and like peaches, and it's just so 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 pretty. Um, but what I really like about this wig is the way that it fits and looks so realistic. Um, the hairline on this wig is one of the best. I've never glued this wig and I probably will never have to because it just fits me so well. And the hairline on it looks like it's growing out of my scalp. scalp. Like, I would not get clocked in public wearing this wig. I know it. Um, I love the curly waves to it. I don't like curly wigs. I think they tangle too much but this one is just slightly wavy and super gorgeous. It's brought me so much confidence. Like, literally when I wear this wig, I feel like a whole different person. <laughs> All right, onto my real hair and what I'm doing to stop myself from going bald. Um, so when I'm wearing wigs, I obviously I have a wig cap under here, but my hair is like braided and kind of wrapped around my head. I have a wig review coming where I actually walk you guys through this exact process that I'm talking about. Um, but I always put oils in my hair or some kind of cream, something to help repair. But I really love this one from Anjou, Anjou I think that's how you say it. This is their argan oil. Um, number one, this is a four ounce jar. It's huge and it's really nice quality. It's got a glass beaker and I love this for the oil because I literally just shove this in through the braids and like deposit it. 
this is helping my hair out so so much and then if i'm actually gonna wear my real hair out which i do a lot more than you guys probably think i just like to wear wigs for the videos um i will put this in the ends and kind of put it through um as long as i'm not going too liberal with it it doesn't look oily um it just like my hair just <laughs> sucks it up because i've just destroyed all moisture but this is 100 percent pure natural argan oil i'm crediting this to helping me out um but these two these two shampoos um i don't even want to look up the prices because i'm pretty sure that they are expensive but alex's mom got me these these are the sebum repair line this is the shampoo and conditioner these make my hair feel like hair again like takes me from straw to hair these are incredible they have they're sulfate free which is really bad for sulfates are really bad for damaged hair i mean they're bad for hair but really bad for damaged hair um it has keratin and biotin and it reduces frizz another word about frizz um she also got me these redken frizz dismiss shampoos and conditioners so my hair is like breaking off and all of that breakage and the split ends just makes it super frizzy and just ugh, it's horrible my hair is horrible um but what i really like to do with this conditioner is use it as like a leave-in product i kind of um apply it to my wet hair and just leave it in there um braid it and not worry about it um so that's what i do if i'm not going out for a couple of days and then when my hair is wet i use this all-in-one treatment spray this is the redken one united there are 25 benefits in here i'm gonna say it as fast as i can Conditions nourish. If, yeah, I feel it already. <laughs> Conditions nourishes, improves manageability, helps even out porous hair, reduces dryness, detangles, instant results. Ideal cutting lotion, primes hair for styling, helps breaking from brushing. Like all of those are really good things, and there's like 15 more benefits. So I spray this on my hair when it's wet. I don't brush it through. You should not brush your hair when it's wet. If it's super damaged, it's way more susceptible to breakage then. Um, but yes. Thank you, Shelly. Those, all those products, except for the argan oil, which was sent to me, that was all shell. I think I'm on like the fifth time that this camera has died. Ugh. Um. All right, so I realized I just filmed an entire talking video without brushing my teeth after my like 17 coffees. So I'm really sorry if my teeth look like shit, um, but yeah. I mean, I, pay I got my nails done. I can't change it all. Shitty teeth or nails, what do you want? Um, anyways, all right, last product. I really, I'm just gonna rush this. Um, Oh, no, 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 no. So my friend Mia turned me on to Batiste. Um, I, let's be really honest. I'm barely shampooing my hair. Um, I never leave the house. It's super damaged. So I think I'm on like um, ooh, once twice a week kind of thing. Oh, I should I just break this. So, anyways, I'm over here being real dirty, and in between <laughs> shampoos, I'm using this dry shampoo. So my friend Mia turned me on to the Batiste regular white spray, which I like to use that a lot to spray my wigs. Um, dry shampoo is also really good for making the shininess of wigs go away. Um, but this is the Divine Dark. So if you have dark hair, um, and I, I got this was supposed to be for my sister, but I forgot to give it to her while she was here for Christmas. But um, yeah, this. Let me just show ya. See? It's like a dark spray. Ow, it actually really hurt my skin. Ah, it's like burning. Holy schmoly, what's in that shit? Anyways, I'll just show you like right here. You see the nozzle, you see how it's like darkness coming out of there. So if you have dark hair and you're tired of white cast and having to like brush it out and still have your hair look a little hazy, especially after like the third day of dry shampooing, um, this bad boy is perfect for darker hairs. I don't know if they have other colors, um, but it would only make sense if they had like a red version. All right, anyways, guys, that's it. It was a lot of products. It's gonna take me forever to edit. It'll probably be up in a couple of days. Um, I'm filming this on the first, but so we'll see how long it takes me to edit it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that some of the products that I put in here helped you. I hope I redeemed myself with that BH palette. Um, and yeah, so let me know what your favorites are. Let me know if you agree or dis disagree respectfully. Um, I always, I mean, I always, if, if I put a product in here and you found that it worked a different way, let me know. Um, Alright, have a great day guys. Thank you so much.